What's up everybody, it's Pykel with League of Items, and I want to make a recap video for the regular season going into the playoffs, just to give an update on what I think of the different teams around the world. Um, I'm in my office right now, so I'm not 100% sure what the video quality is going to be like. I'm trying to set up everything, but... LEC is starting right now and I want to be able to watch some of these games. So I'm going to try to run through these leagues pretty quick. I'm going to compare my preseason thoughts with what happened in the season. Obviously, it's only the regular season, so like we could still get something surprising in the playoffs, but a lot of the time that doesn't happen. Uh, so I'm working off of my other screen. Looks like they're about to get into game one. Uh, so let's start in the LCS. Um, before the season started, I still thought that Golden Guardians was going to be the 10th place team. Uh, I think most people did. Um, Niles didn't have a good season, was targeted by a lot of teams. Maybe he can perform better in the future, but that's a really bad rookie season. Um, Iconic was kind of hamstrung by the rest of the team, specifically with how bad top lane was going often. Um, but it was it's tough to differentiate yourself in this kind of meta as well. Uh, so it's it's unclear how good Iconic is or could be. Blaze Olive had some okay matches, but it's just really not um, a top level player at this point. Stixa, league average eighty carry probably still. Uh, and then newbie, it's tough to play support when you're on a losing team. So a lot of these players, I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt. I think Niles is the one that you should probably have the most negative opinion of their performance, but I'm not convinced that Niles is like the worst player, the worst professional player from North America ever either. So they could definitely, you know, build off of this for the summer. Um, but how much, it's unclear. I don't know if they can really get outside of the top, bottom two, bottom three. Uh, before the season started, Dig was my ninth place team. Dig ended up finishing fifth. Uh, before the season started, in my pre in my preview video, I said that Dignitas was a team that I wanted to target because if Fake God can play well and if Dardock is in a good meta, then Dignitas can be very good. I had big question marks about Saligo and Neo. They both ended up being at least league average, which is very good um, for their winning chances moving forward. And then Afro move my my thoughts on Afro move is always like he's a winning player. He can help put your team into a winning situation even if he doesn't help you for DraftKings but for this year he was actually very helpful for DraftKings he had a really good split uh, there were a lot of good Alistair games uh, the amount of Alistair that he played was kind of insane right so let me just check what his champion pool actually looked like throughout the year I'm using uh, Leaguepedia for this so he had eight Alistair games, went six and two. That's about what you'd expect. He's been playing Alistair for his entire career. Um, so maybe don't give it to him. Uh, but whatever. So that's that's really the team that I was the most wrong on was Dignitas. It's the team that I think, I think most people were just straight up wrong about. Um, most of these were fairly close. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to say like yes. I predicted that Dignitas was going to be good, but I at least identified how Dignitas could be good, and it was a team that I wanted to target because I thought that they were going to be better. Um, they had chances to be better. I shouldn't say they. I thought they were going to be better. Next up, I had Immortals, and the entire year, uh, well, the entire split. I feel like I was very negative about Immortals because I hate the whole. OCE narrative that people were trying to force saying like Rays and Destiny were going to be one of the best bot lanes in North America just because they're from OCE like it's just a ridiculous idea um, they went 7 and 11 not horrible but I think that in the summer we're going to see them go in the opposite direction probably I think that um, I think that CLG will probably be better than them FlyQuest will be r right about even with them, so I would I would expect CLG to move up a little bit. Um, but yeah, Immortals. Revenge had an okay season, but he's not a special player. Xerxes is on the back end of his career now at this point. Uh, Xerxes, actually no, Xerxes is not on the back end of his career. Xerxes, it like okay, it's gonna sound 
stupid. But Xerxes, I, I think if you watch the Infinity Edge podcast, uh, you know, I'm I'm probably relatively high on Xerxes compared to most people um, that like focus on DraftKings because they don't remember they did they they didn't pay attention to League of Legends when Xerxes was playing really well. So I think that that's a spot where you could potentially find like good jungle matchups for Xerxes in underdog spots where they actually have a really good chance to win. Xerxes didn't have a great year this year, but I still think that the upside is there. Um, Insanity is an okay player. I think that if we get into these late game, like like they would be an interesting team to watch in like a best of three, best of five, because teams will almost necessarily play slower and that would give them a lot more winning chances. But in the regular season, it's tough uh, to play like that, um, especially against teams that are better than you. Um, let's just move on to the next one. Uh, CLG. So, I still think that the sin, the sin, the Finn signing was bad. Uh, but once Broxa and Pobelter were in the lineup, they did start to play a lot better. They're another team that's going to be very fun to watch, um, primarily for DraftKings, just because their play style is very good for DraftKings. Um, Finn is at least league average in North America, but that's not saying much. It's not It's not that tough to be league average in North America. Um, Brox is still a good player, probably a top four jungler uh, in the LCS. Four, maybe five. One, two, fourth or fifth. Um, Pobelter, league average. Wild Turtle, probably worse than league average in my opinion. And then Smoothie, uh, I don't have a high opinion of Smoothie. I think CLG will be better in the future though. Uh, FlyQuest. So FlyQuest, this was another team that I was very skeptical on. It was everybody's dark horse to be a good team because of Jose Diodo. And before the season started, I, I was kind of explaining to everyone that last year's meta was part of the reason why Jose Diodo looked so good. And I was skeptical about how good they would be in the LC, in the LCS, but Jose Diodo, you know, the team did still play around them, and they still did have some pretty good, um, some really good matches. Uh, Jose Diodo was probably the best performing player. Um, they got Hecarim seven times and went one in six. That's insane. Um, that's just insane. Um, I think that he's like a Lee Sin player. So Lee Sin just received some buffs. Hopefully the meta changes next split and we can see some like champion variety because obviously something wasn't working for them. I know a lot of their team compositions were kind of weird. Um, they did place a high priority on things like Seraphine, which is a good champion. Um, but overall, you know, not a great season for... Not a great season for FlyQuest. I think a lot of people are still hopeful that they'll be better um, next split. But I think that this is about what we should expect. Um, and again, it's a good team for DraftKings purposes to roster them and to play against. So that's always fun. Um, who's next? Evil Geniuses. So Evil Geniuses just lost to TSM in the playoffs. Um, so they're out, I believe. Overall, I think Evil Geniuses is still a pretty good team. Uh, Impact, good player. Um, not really the, not really a true carry player. Sven Skarin, a good jungler. Uh, not really the focal point of the team, though. The team kind of lives and dies by Jizuke and uh, Ignar. So if we get Ryze coming back into the meta, like I know TSM had to ban it a few times yesterday, that would be good for Jizuke. Uh, they just don't really seem to play around Jizuke very well. And when you have a player like that, you kind of need to play around him. Um, one thing that I think would be interesting is if 100 Thieves got uh, got Jizuke. I think that would be pretty good. Um, I don't know if they could do it for uh, like import reasons and everything, but just stylistically, I think Jizuke would be a good player for 100 Thieves, much better than Demonte and Ryoma. Um, next up, 100 Thieves. I had them projected fourth. They ended fourth. Uh, I still can't believe the Demonte Rioma situation. I hope that Demonte leaves and goes to another team that will, you know, actually play around his play style. Demonte 
when they were good last year was a big part of why they were good last year. His ability to play the laning phase, get into the mid game, and move around with the jungler was like the biggest reason why FBI and Huki looked good because they would be able to create advantages, put teams into tough situations, and win games. Um, when you when you make teams make a lot of difficult decisions, they're going to make a difficult decision the wrong way once or twice, and then you just win the game. Uh, TSM. Uh, I had TSM as my third team. Uh, they ended up finishing the regular season in second place, but TSM and Team Liquid is very hard to differentiate. I think they should have won that series. At least should have won one or two more games um, against Team Liquid in that other series. That throw around Baron was pretty horrible. Team Liquid uh, had a pretty bad early and middle part of the split, but they ultimately rounded into form, uh, and you know they're looking pretty good right now in the playoffs. Uh, then we had... C9, who is the best team in North America. They are still the best team in North America. I think they will win the spring split. Um, you know, if they have a if they have a not great performance in the semifinals and Team Liquid looks really dominant in the semifinals, I could see some people, uh, you know, saying that Team Liquid should beat them in the finals, but C9 is better than them. Um, we're we're just seeing the we haven't even broken the surface. I forget whatever that saying is, but uh, this is just the beginning for C9. Uh, they're going to get better and better as the year goes on. It's going to be pretty scary when it's all said and done. Next up, let's go to the LEC, which is currently in game one. They're still in draft. They're just getting out of draft. Okay, so um, for these, I had it broken down into tiers. Um, so the numbers might not make a lot of sense, but basically my fifth tier was SK Gaming and Astralis. Tinks played really well this year. Um, really good, a really good performance from Tinks. Uh, I, I think Tinks is just a very good player. Um, and the, the entire team, you know, kind of centers around Tinks' play style because he's able to dictate the pace of the game and gets a lot of these games into a macro style game which is very good. So I was very happy with their performance last year. I don't know how good Blue, Jezu, and Treats can be in the long run, but I think Genax is a good player. Um, so I had them in, at the bottom, but they got in the playoffs. And a lot of these teams down here are pretty similar. I don't know if SK is going to be able to duplicate that performance in the summer because the macro play style does have some weaknesses if they play too slow in the early game. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens to the metagame moving forward. Um because if there are more, like if there are more champions, if there are less champions that can farm safely in the jungle, um, then there will be more volatility in the early game, and that'll probably be a problem. Probably be a problem for SK. Uh, the other low team that I had was Origin that turned into Astralis. Uh, you know, they were a fun team to play against for DraftKings, but that's about it. Um, I don't have a very high opinion of any of their players. Um, <laughs> they had Nuke Duck, which was hilarious for a lot of the season. Magic Felix came in, and they were a lot more competitive. Zanzara is a fun player to watch. White Knight actually did have a good split. Um, was So White Knight, Zanzara, and Magic Felix were all pretty interesting. Jeskla and Promise Q, uh, they're definitely not good enough uh, at this point. Um, and then let's just do the rest by from the bottom to the top. So Vitality, Vitality underperformed immensely this season, and I think a lot of it came down to Skeens. The funny thing is that this next meta will probably be good for Skeens. Uh, I think that we'll, well, we might move away from a lot of these really tanky junglers that can still carry, like Udi or Hecarim, Volibear is making a comeback. Um, if we saw, like, more Sejuani-type players, then a player like Skeens will be able to play Elise Leeson, Lilia, Evelyn, um, these other types of champions. I just think they didn't really play around Skeens' as champion pool as well as they should have. Um, the going from comp to crown shot doesn't really do much in my opinion. I think they're basically the same player. Um, I liked comp and Lebrob as a duo. I think Shigenda couldn't really show what they are capable of. Melitza had a bad season. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with a lot of the game scripts were just negative for them. Um, so, you know, Vitality, they are a talented team. I think they can make a, a comeback in the summer. Um, that's a team that I think we should target uh, in the future. Next up, we have XL. Um, 
Cry's late game player, Dan Bad Jungler. Chekalod had a good season, and then Patrick and Torre, late game players. So XL has an identity. They know how they want to play the game. I think if they had a jungle upgrade, they could be a pretty uh, competitive team. Um, but if they stick with Dan, I think that they're going to miss playoffs again. Misfits, um, I'm huge on Misfits uh, moving forward. <laughs> like, I, I played them a ton this year, uh, a ton this split, and it didn't really work out for me. But I still think that the process is right. I think that Hyret had a really good season. Razork is a very funny name when uh, Medic is screaming it and is a pretty good player overall. Vetio had a good season, not a great season, but I think that he'll improve as time goes on. And then Kabe and Vander are a good bot lane. Um, they played a little bit too slow for my liking. I think that if they solidify their mid game um, and were a little bit more aggressive and like willing to fight, I think that it would be better for them. So we'll see how that goes in the future. Uh, whenever you listen to my picks, you have to be very careful with me and Misfits because I love Misfits. I, I want them to play well, so it kind of changes my perception of them. Um, so just always be careful when you're following me on Misfits. Uh, Fnatic, Yamato Cannon, horrible coach. Uh, Niski, very overrated mid laner. Uh, and then the rest of the team is pretty good. Uh, Bwipo is still one of the best top laners in the league. Selfmade is one of the best junglers in the league. Niski's overrated. Upset is a uh, Upset is very similar to Kabe. They're basically the same player in my opinion because they're both more of a late a late game style AD carry. You get that a lot in um, in Europe. Uh, like if you look at all the AD carries, Crown Shot. Patrick, Kabe, and Upset are all very similar in my mind. Like, they're more of, like, the scaling, don't necessarily do anything, and then get there for the late-game team fights. Reckless can kind of do both. Han Sama's more aggressive, Karzi's more aggressive, uh, and then you have some of the other 80 carries who are just not very good. Um, but, yeah, I think Fnatic, they'll be better. They'll probably beat Schalke. They'll probably get one or two more rounds into the future. Uh, they could still beat Rogue. They could still beat Mad Lions. Uh, I think they could be competitive with G2. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they end up. Uh, they're still more talented than almost every single team in the league. Um, it just comes down to, like, can they get Niski good matchups that make Niski look good? Because uh, that's really what they need, is they need Niski to not, um, not, not be brutalized. Uh, let's take a look at his champion pool, actually. Because that's, that's really the biggest problem, I think, with Fnatic. Let's see. Okay. So Niski lost on Victor, lost on Syndra, lost on Aurelia, lost on Galio. Galio is a good champion for Niski. I think that that's fine. Um, when two and two on his ear, I don't like Niski on his ear. Two and one is Lucian. I don't know if I really like that. Two and zero oh as Twisted Fate. Two and zero oh is Oriana. One and one is Rise. Not really a lot of the champions that I would think. Uh, let's go back to twenty twenty. Let's see what they were playing in twenty twenty. Okay, well, I'd have to go to, like, a different team page and everything, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I think that Niski's just not a, not a good control mage player. Like, will they have good performances because the rest of their team is doing well? Yes, but it's just they're not the player that I want in mid lane for my team. Um, I'd rather have Caps. I'd rather have Larson. I'd rather have Humanoid. I'd rather have Abadage. Uh... That's about it. So a league average player. Uh, next up, Schalke. Uh, Schalke had a really good performance against G2. I love the, the way that they approached the draft, um, even though they didn't they weren't perfect by any means. But Broken Blade's a good player. Gilius is a good player. Abadage is a good player. Neon is an okay player. Uh, not really anything special. Isn't really a difference maker. Um, and then Limit had an amazing um, an amazing series yesterday, so I think a lot of people will probably be overrating him in the future. Um, but that, that series was very good. Uh, almost carried Schalke to a victory. Um, it's It really is like the Broken Blade, the Broken Blade and the Abadage show, though. I think 
if they can really focus in on playing through the top half of the map, they could be an interesting team in the summer. Um, I love Dylan Falco. I think he's a very good coach. Um, but that's that's really it. Um, they're going to be a competitive middle of the table team. Probably get in the playoffs. We'll give teams difficult series. I'm not sure how far they can really go. Do they have chances to beat Fnatic? I think they do. Um, so Broken Blade can go up against Bwipo. Gilius is not as good as Self Made, but will have winning chances. Um, if especially if Self Made um, and Yamato can and draft into like a more of a finesse jungle. Uh, in the mid lane, Abadage is just as good as Niski, uh, if not better. Um, I think there's a lot of good matchups for Abadage into Niski. We could see some Cassid in games, for example, uh, in that series. Uh, they hovered it once last last series, but they were going to blind it, and it just wasn't a good idea. And then bot lane, they could go even. Um, so if you're a fanatic, you probably want to play through bot lane um, and dive them a bunch. That's probably how I would go after them. Uh, Mad Lions. Um, I'm still... I'm still not a big fan of, like, the El Yoya and Shadow Switch. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes today in playoffs. Um, I think Armut was a gigantic upgrade. Had some really good matches this split. Um, but, but overall, Mad Lions just didn't look like themselves. I think in the summer they'll be better. And in the summer I think we'll get a lot more consistency out of G2, Rogue, Mad Lions, Fnatic... Um, and they'll start to differentiate themselves from the rest of the league. Because uh, I still think those are the top four teams. Um, and I would love it if Misfits could get up there, but I, I'm not sure if that's the case. Maybe I'm just insane. Uh, in second place, we have Rogue. Um, I'm low on Rogue just in general. I, I think that Odoamne is a good upgrade over Finn. Inspired's a good player. Larson's a good player. Hansama's a good player. Uh, and Shrimby's okay. Um, Trimby has had some good some good matches this split, but there's like one champion that they have a ridiculous record on. Oh, Rakan, where they just keep giving him Rakan. Uh, so I don't know if that's really going to happen much more. Um, in the playoffs, they have a cool lineup. Uh, they're playing Senna Cho'Gath in the bot lane. Very cool. Um, if Rogue starts becoming that sort of team, like if that's their win condition over a team like G2 is just by like outdrafting them um, and then letting their, like, punishing aggression. That'd be really cool. I'm not sure if it's going to be an easy way to play uh, in a five-game series. We kind of saw Schalke try to do the same thing. Um, oh, and right when I say that, <laughs> Karzy gets a kill on Jinx. Um, so, yeah, Rogue, just a good team. Uh, they'll be competitive uh, in this playoffs and in summer playoffs, I'm sure. And then G2 is G2, still the best team in Europe. Some people will probably argue that Rogue is the best team in Europe. Um, but I'll take G2 against them every day um, without even thinking about it. Uh, they didn't play well against Schalke, and they still pulled out the victory. The Game 5 draft was kind of concerning. Um, you know, the, the analysts on the desk didn't really have a good understanding of what was going on, I think, because both teams had big problems with... Uh, their drafts um, but like they went from saying that you know G2 didn't have enough damage and then they started saying that um, Schalke didn't have enough damage into the three tanks it just it was all it was all a play style thing like if you're Schalke you needed to be in position like it, it's not just the material in the game it's also how the, the material interacts with, with each other so if Schalke was at Dragon first or if they were at Baron first, or if they were in the close vicinity to that where, like, it's a more predictable team fight, they were playing really well. They had some good engages with Azir. Um, J every time that Jinx got, like, one kill, she just went off, and uh, the team fight was much easier. Um, you, but, it's, it's you know, you need to get that first kill. Uh, I think Seraphine Lucian was very interesting, but they didn't have enough damage on their team. Uh, so the fact that it... The fact that they went, like, 4-5... Um, Four five. They did Seraphine. They picked Seraphine, and I forget who else they picked. But they basically locked themselves into a into like a one or two damage composition, and then Schalke fifth picked Aatrox. Instead of going with Aatrox, if you took like a tank, a frontline tank that can like establish a frontline, um, and like create a line of demarcation where you can't pass it then it's a lot easier for them to play out that fight. 
the fact that Aatrox can still die even though they could drain tank, at, they could theoretically drain tank. It's a lot more, uh, it's a lot easier to play around like a true tank. I guess they had Scion. It was Scion, Volibear, Gragas. So they, I guess it went Seraphine, Scion. Um, but yeah, so I still expect G2 to win. Uh, still expect G2 to win the playoffs. Uh, let's go to the LCK. The LCK was pretty straightforward. Um, I basically had it completely right. Um, Dom won, best team in the league. Everybody knew that going into the year. Uh, I think the spot where I was different from a lot of people, actually, I guess not really. Um, I was very high on Hanwha Life. I knew that Hanwha Life was going to be good because their roster is very good. Uh, Chovy and Deft, just very good players. But let's go from bottom to top. So Fred at Brion, I had them in the lowest tier. They ended up in the lowest tier. They don't have a lot of talent, and they just couldn't do anything with it. Afrika Freaks was a little disappointing for me this year. I like Bang and, La Bang and La Hens. Um it just didn't work out. Um, they, they couldn't maintain their leads. They were pretty similar to CLG, I guess you could say. Like, they would get these early game leads and then throw them away, um, which is kind of upsetting. Uh, live Sandbox, um, if, you're, if you're dumb enough to have Yamato Cannon as your coach in Korea, then you're probably a horrible organization. Uh, so, good job. Uh, KT Rolster, I know John from the esports department was big on them. They didn't have a good year. Uh, Doran still a very good player, according to most people. Um, I don't know, just I don't like hybrid. I think that I think that Noah will, will probably take over in the summer. Nongshim, I was pretty high on Nongshim compared to most people. Uh, I love Peanut. Rich is a good player. Peanut's a good player. Bay is okay. Uh, Deoctam had some good uh, some good games to split, good matches to split, and uh, Kellen is serviceable. A league average player, not really a difference maker in my opinion. DRX is by far the team that I was the worst, um, that, I, that I got the most incorrect. If you watch the video uh, from the preseason, the reason why I have them so low is because I genuinely believe that DRX's lineup from last year would have been one of the best teams in the world this year. So if they just, if they just kept their roster, they would have been competing for uh, Korean titles, they would have been competing for world's titles. Um, but they threw it all away. I mean, Keria is insane. Keria, best support player in the world, probably. They just let him go to T1. Chovy and Deft, two of the best players in the roles in the world. They just let them both walk. Uh, it just kind of blows my mind. So I was basically saying, like, I hope they don't get a kill the entire year. I hope they don't get a win the entire year. It didn't happen. They actually started off pretty well. Uh, Piosik is a good player. Um, I was skeptical that Piosik would be able to, to duplicate that performance from the summer without, you know, the rest of the team around them. But DRX still knows how to play around uh, Piosik, and that's a very good sign for them. Um, it gives them a clear identity. I don't know what kind of metas they're going to survive in, but they're good. Um, and, well, okay, I shouldn't say they're good. I don't expect them to come in fifth place uh, in the summer. I think they'll probably regress a little bit, but I like watching Piosik, and I hope that Piosik does well. If Solka and Bao can turn into something, then great. You have a chance to be a, a middle-table team. That's probably their ceiling for now. T1. Uh, T1's one of the best teams in the world probably right now, even though they have like a 10- or 11-man roster, at, or a 10-player roster, and you know it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me why they went through that entire thing in the middle of the year where they were playing a lot of the rookies, changing up their roster all the time. Maybe their goal is to sell off a bunch of players. It'd be a good move financially, probably. Um, but they are also like looking for the future um, and looking for the next best player in the world, which is it's a smart thing to do uh, when you don't have to do it. It's like the idea of you know having a backup quarterback in the NFL or drafting a backup quarterback in the NFL even if you have a great one, because you can find that spot where you go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and that's basically what they're trying to do with Faker and Closer, Teddy and Gumayusi. And maybe maybe they'll get it. Um, same thing with Kana and Zeus, even though they're both relatively young. Carry up, best support player in the world. I don't know if that's controversial or not, but I genuinely think that probably, probably one of my two or three favorite players in the world. Uh... So good for T1. I think that they'll be shockingly competitive. Um, shockingly competitive in the playoffs. I think they go through DRX pretty easily. I think they beat Gen G in the second round. 
uh, and then we'll have a Dom Juan T1 final, hopefully. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun to watch. Hopefully, Showmaker is healthy. Um, the whole wrist thing is, you know, just really unlucky. Uh, so that's kind of sad, in my opinion. Um, all right, then we have Homolife. Morgan, they're finally playing only Morgan, which is great. Uh, Arthur and Johan are replaceable. I don't really care. Chovy's a very good player. Def's a very good player. Vista's having a pretty good split. Um, just doing their job. If you can just go even in the early and mid game for Hanma Life, a lot of the times you're going to end up winning through team fights because Deft and Chovy are just insanely good. Um, and Morgan, I think, is a very good top laner. Uh, so Morgan will have some chances to shine. I think that they should probably beat Nongshim pretty easily in the first round, and then hopefully they give Dom Juan Gaming a very competitive series. Um, but, you know, going into the year, we kind of knew that the LCK was four good teams and everybody else. Uh, Genji, uh, Rascal, pretty good player, nothing special. Clid has has fallen a little bit since leaving T1. Um, their play style just isn't very impressive to watch right now. Uh, it's it's somewhat different from their like you know always team fighting, getting a lot of kills in last year. Uh, they're just kind of more subdued this year. Still had some good so still had some good spots, but. They're just more about winning the game than having a lot of kills. Like, Dom1 Gaming's more flashy. Uh, even T1's a little more flashy at this point. Maybe that'll change in the playoffs, but uh, I think of Dom1 and T1 as, as better teams right now because they have that higher ceiling um, in terms of, like, aggressive play. Uh, aggressive play is, is something that separates good teams from great teams. Um, but BDD's still a very good player. Ruler's still a very good, good player. Uh, and then last but not least, we have Damwon. Uh, Damwon, still the best team in the league. A lot of people were a little bit concerned going from Nagari to Khan. I think most people who watch a lot of League of Legends and have done so for multiple years knew that Khan and Nagari are pretty similar in terms of talent. Khan had a down year on FPX, but it wasn't, it wasn't just Khan. It was the way that the FPX plays around top laners. Nagari did not have the split that people thought that they would in China this year. Um, you know, a little bit less impressive uh, in China than they were in the LCK. Um, but overall, I mean, I basically had the LCK just 100% correct. Um, and I think most people did because, you know, Korea doesn't have as much insane turnover unless you get a random team like Damwon, who is like a, a nothing team that just becomes amazing. Uh, then let's go to the LPL. And the LPL was insane with how things kind of went this year. Uh, so let's just go from the bottom. So Rogue Warriors really underperformed this year, in my opinion. I thought that Ziv could have a better year. I still like Haro. Forge, I thought, given the full-time role, would have done a better job. Uh, they had Zwuji and Chow Chow for a while, um, but now it's Betty and uh, Kaishwan. Um, I, don't, I don't expect them to be this bad next year. Uh, it's very good to play against them in DraftKings. Not much else to say. Uh, I like Haro a lot, but the rest of the team is just not playing well at all. Um, There's just nothing really to say. Um, E-Star. ZS is an interesting player. Um, wasn't able to really show off their upside because the rest of the map would often be losing the game. I think a lot of that came down to Hacker and Irma. Um, it, it's a lot like the spine in, in uh, soccer or international football, whatever you follow. Um, like... You need to have a good core in the middle of the field in order to let the other side lanes play well. So if your mid laner and jungler are constantly getting pressured and not winning early game, then it's going to put a lot of stress on the side lanes, and it's going to make it much more difficult for them to create their own advantages in top lane or bot lane. Uh, Rat and Xiaosi are pretty good. Uh, Hacker and Irma are really what's holding them back right now. OMG, uh, you know, a, a pretty boring team, in my opinion. Not going to spend any more time talking about them. LGD kind of played a lot better at the end of the season once Kramer was playing more. And now Garvey is their top laner, which is kind of interesting. Um, I don't expect them to be very good in the summer. But they could be a team that I just am reading wrong. I don't think Kramer's good. I think that Kramer was overrated in Korea, overrated in, in China. So moving on from that. Thunder Talk, I expected them to be a lot worse uh, this year. Um... I expected them to be worse. And they're still at the bottom of the table, so whatever. They were a little bit better than I thought they were going to be. 
V5, everybody knew that V5 was going to go the opposite direction. Um, they didn't keep SAMD, uh, which was pretty weird. Um, just not that good. I had hopes for Y4, uh, but they went back and forth between Y4 and Trigger a lot. I just don't think that's going to work out in the long run. So that now I, I have a lower opinion of them. They'll be a team that I probably try to fade a lot in the, in the summer. Uh, BLG is probably the team that I was the highest on relative to everybody else. Um, they had a lot of underwhelming performances. I still think that Biu Biu is okay, had a pretty bad split. Meteor, I thought would play a lot better, didn't really have a good split. Zika had a bad split. A lot of that was due to drafting. Uh, their drafting was horrible in the beginning of the year. Um, just very, truly horrible. Um, and then aiming in... It started off aiming in Mark, but now it's aiming in J-Way. I think that they'll be better in the summer. I'm still going to be high on them relative to everybody else. I don't know if they're going to have a great DraftKings play style and, like, give you the chance of, like, those blow-up games of 150, 160 points uh, from... Well, actually, they should be able to do that. I don't know if they can get up to, like, the 180, 190, 200 for your captain, though. Um, but that'll be something to watch out for. I, I'm still high on Zika and aiming. So we'll see what happens with the rest of the team. Uh, LNG, uh, they played pretty well this year. Um, not very surprising because I know Tarzan is like a very good player. Uh, Light and Iwandi played pretty good. Icon is a league average player. And then Makuya was just bad. Uh, so if they, could, if they could make their top lane better, that'd be very good. Um, Invictus Gaming had a down split. Uh, they just lost a lot of matches that they shouldn't. The Shy is still one of the best top laners in the world. Uh, Shun had a pretty good split. Rookie had a pretty good split. They were going back and forth between their 80 carries, which wasn't great. Um, and then they, I think they also did go through a couple of supports, but now they're on Lucas. I think that they should beat Rare Adam in the first round. I think they could probably beat FPX. Uh, so that'll be interesting to watch moving forward. Uh, Rare Adam. Rare Adam is a team that I'm never going to be a fan of. Um, I don't like their play style. They are very slow. Um... I think that a lot of their, a lot of the reason why people like them is because they had a good performance in that one tournament in the off season, and because they have iBoy, and iBoy was thought of as like the next best uh, eighty carry in China. I don't think that's come to fruition at all. I don't like Fofo, um, so Rare Adams another team where if you like them, we're always going to be on the opposite side of those matches. Suning had a bad year, um, or a bad split relative to expectations coming off of the world's finals. Um, but I think that in the summer, they'll be a better team. Um, Bin is still a very good top laner. S of M is an interesting jungler who makes a lot of weird decisions, but still a good player. Angel in a best of five format, I think is better um, than in, well, actually, yeah, the longer the series goes on, the better that Angel is because it'll be easier for their team to figure out a good mid lane matchup. Uh, Huan Feng is still one of the best AD carries in the league, and An had an okay an okay split. Basically, going into the season, I said if An is good, then Suning will be just as good, if not better, than last year. If An is bad, they're going to be worse. I think right now we can say that An is probably a little bit worse than Sword Art, but will uh, has the upside of being better than Sword Art, which is still in the range of outcomes. So that's kind of cool to watch. Um, hopefully, they have a good match against LNG. Um, LNG definitely has chances to win that match, though, so that's a little bit concerning. Um, I'll be rooting for Suning pretty hard in that one, though. World Elite. Breeze is a good player. Beishong is a good player. Shanks is not a good player. Zhao Meng and Missing are both good players. Uh, World Elite needs to do something about mid lane. Personally, I would say trade for Zika. So try to get Zika off of um, Billy Billy Gaming, and then I can stop liking Billy Billy Gaming, and I can start rooting for World Elite as my favorite team. That would be awesome in my opinion. Uh, FPX, Nogri is a good player. Beishuan got in trouble, or no, Bo got in trouble for cheating, or uh, match fixing. Tian is their jungler right now. I don't know what's going to happen with their jungle situation. It, it, is, it is negatively impacting their entire team. It's very similar to what happened to Invictus Gaming last year. Uh, you need your jungle to be... Your, you need your jungler to be good in the specific meta. I don't know if Tian is going to be good in this meta that we're playing in right now. I think that Invictus Gaming uh, could beat FPX, and I think that JDG would beat FPX. So I don't expect FPX to go very far um, in the playoffs. 
uh, this split. Uh, JDG is hitting their stride right now. They're very, very good on this patch. Um, this is perfect Kanabi territory. Last year, I, t I told everyone that I thought Kanabi was one of the best junglers in the world. They are one of the best junglers in the world. They were not good at that last meta um, with heavy farming junglers like Graves. Just not their play style. Um, they can play it, but it's not, it's not when they're at their peak. Um, and I think that we're getting into a spot where they're going to be on their peak again. Rek'Sai can, Rek'Sai can probably be played right now. Nocturne can be played. Um, I'm not sure if Kanabi's very good at Nocturne, but it's, it seems like a champion that would make sense for, for Kanabi. Um, Hecarim is fine. Udyr is fine. Had some very good Udyr performances. I think Volibear is going to be good for Kanabi, especially because they can flex it between top lane and jungle and dive top lane relentlessly. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, top Esports had a bad split uh, for Top Esports. They should be beating basically everyone. Um, but they had some bad performances. Um, overall, I like the roster, though. I think that Juo has done a good job coming in um, as the new support player. And then EDG and RNG were both very surprising. Um, I didn't watch this part of my preview, but I know that last year I talked a lot about um, Scout being like an insanely good player and people just forgetting how young they are. Uh, I didn't expect Flandre to have as good of a split as they have, um, but everybody knew that Flandre was like a very volatile top laner that could make big plays and carry games. Like, they're an actual carry top laner. Jai Jai had a good split. Wasn't sure how that was going to turn out, but they're good at this. They're good on this patch. Uh, they're good in this meta. Um, so that should be good for the short term. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to maintain this level of performance in the summer. Um... But Scout's very good. Viper is very good. Mako is good. Uh, so it's a fun team to watch. It'll be interesting to see them play up against uh, Top Esports because they will most likely play against Top Esports. Um, I would expect Top Esports to win that, uh, to win that match. Um, and then RNG. The only thing that was keeping me from liking RNG more was the whole Xiaohu thing. I was very surprised when they went to the top lane, but after thinking about the champion pools, my opinion was basically like, yes, I understand that they're a mid laner and they're going to the top lane, and that could go wrong. But Xiaohu's been playing the game for 10 years. They've played top lane before in solo queue and all these other... Uh, they've definitely played top lane in solo queue, and they have a lot of champions that make sense in the top lane. So Xiaohu's going to be good. They instantly played well. Um, there were a few times where Xiaohu made some weird decisions and big mistakes in the side lane, but overall, Xiaohu has, has had an amazing series, um, an amazing split. JDG against RNG would be very interesting to see Zoom go up against Xiaohu again. Um, FPX against RNG would be very interesting because there are the there is the opportunity for them to like flex and stuff like that, which be which could be pretty cool. Uh, Gala played a lot better than I thought they would this year, and Cryin was about what I expected. Not really the best mid laner in the world. I think that moving Xiaohu into the top lane was to allow them to be more aggressive because in the mid lane, a lot of the times you'll get these weird matchups where it's just like control mage against control mage. You can't really do anything. In the top lane, there's a lot more trading and a lot more skill expression um, that can help carve out advantages. And that's basically what they won a lot of their matches through this year. So overall, the LPL was kind of insane. I don't think anybody had a great read on it. Um, that could be wrong. Maybe some people did expect RNG and EDG to be very good. Um, but when the playoffs are all said and done, I still expect Top Esports to win because they are just more talented than everybody. They have the best player in Knight, and that's pretty important. Um, but overall, I think that I had an okay uh, preview set before the season started. Um, I'm excited to watch out. Watch out. I'm excited to watch the playoffs and see how they play out. Um, and I'm sure I'll do another set of previews before next season. Um, and hopefully in the summer I'll have more time to do stuff. It's a little bit easier to be motivated when it's nice outside. Uh, I think I'll be making more videos out of my office instead of, uh, instead of at my house just because, you know, it's a good setup. And as long as there's nobody here, um, it's like, you know, just nicer, better windows and stuff. Um, but, yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.